We've been telling you about the Democrats and Republicans coming together on a bipartisan framework for a proposed gun safety bill. It includes funding to help states implement red flag laws and seize guns from those considered violent, along with money for mental health and school safety and enhanced background checks for buyers under 21. And there's more. Texas Senator John Cornyn, who's one of the chief negotiators of the bill, is kind enough to join us before his day really gets started. Senator, congratulations on getting this far. Most people are looking at what we know. That's it's kind of broad. Can we go over a few things? Certainly. All right. Number one, major funding to help states pass and implement red flag laws. A lot of gun owners are worried about that. What should you? What should we know? Well, we should know first of all there is no national red flag. These are states with existing programs, and uh, a condition of the grants will be that they have a rigorous due process requirement. We are, after all, talking about a constitutional right. But the goal is to keep guns out of the hands of people with criminal backgrounds and people with mental health problems, which is the current law. And this will be, uh, I think, hopefully uh, uh, other programs designed for crisis intervention, I think, would also qualify under right. this grant program as well. All right. So you say funding for mental health and school safety. So that would be an additional uh uh, school safety experts? Would there be psychologists dispatched to schools big and small? This is going to be a, from infrastructure to staffing to um, uh, safety officers at, uh, at schools. Uh, we want to come up with a, a model of best practices to protect our children in the school. No parent should have to send their child to school fearful that they will not be safe. No child right. should go to school fearful for their own safety, and that, that's what that is focused Which on. Which is interesting, because the president never talks about hardening the target or, or school safety, but it's in there. The boyfriend loophole, can you expand on that? Domestic violence uh, is a, a disqualifier under current law. If you, if you have a felony conviction for domestic violence, you can't legally purchase a firearm under the existing law. This would extend it to misdemeanor uh, domestic violence offenses. Uh, we're still working through the details of that. But as you know, a lot of people have right. a non-traditional relationship. It's not uh, form; they're not married, but they live. They basically are partners, and this is designed to make sure that uh, uh, people who commit domestic violence and potentially would use firearms in that process are uh, are discouraged from doing so. You so still you have enhanced background checks for buyers under 21, but you're not making you can buy under 21. Some things That's that are not in there: high capacity magazines are not banned. Universal background checks are not there. Safe store storage requirements for all firearms in houses, which would be logical, but that's not mandated. Also, license requirements to purchase all assault weapons. There's no 21-day waiting period. These are all things that the president wanted and Democrats wanted. Eric Schmidt weighed in. He's a Missouri attorney general. He's concerned about the red flag laws. Let's listen. This is a very dangerous road. Uh, to go down, and you'd be eviscerating two fundamental rights, a Second Amendment right and the right to due process along the way. But yeah. the red flag logs are nothing more than a green light for gun confiscation. And why in the world would we give more power to the same people who are willing to arrest folks in the name of safety in an emergency for taking their kids to a playground during COVID and locking down businesses and creating a ministry of truth? Why wouldn't we believe that these folks are going to weaponize red flag laws to punish their political opponents. And this is a refrain that people really fear when they talk about the, uh, the red flag laws. Do you understand where he's coming from? Well, I don't know whether the attorney general has read what we've written. Um, there is no national red flag law. I don't know whether Missouri has one. If they don't, they will not be forced to adopt one. Uh, some states, red states like Florida and Indiana have them, and they seem to be working relatively well. But again, this is not, there's no national requirement, and certainly one of the requirements of the funding will be the sort of rigorous due process that the attorney general said he, concerns him. I think he'll be uh, comforted uh, by the requirements uh, in, in the bill. Um, but states that don't have red flag laws will not be compelled to pass them. Senator, I've just I've been struck by the fact that I have not heard anyone playing pot. Senator Murphy the whole time did not come out and speak, or, or you didn't come out and speak and say anything bad about the other guys for the first time in a long time. But the president has. The president's been very critical of the process along the way, whether they were sitting with Jimmy Kimmel or talking on the tarmac. Has it been hard overcoming that? 
No, we just put our heads down and work together. Uh, Senator Murphy and I come from very different places. He's from Connecticut, a blue state. I'm from Texas, a red state, where guns are common and people know how to use them responsibly. Um, what we've done is try to find that common ground on things like uh, background checks. We passed uh, in 2018 the Fix Nix bill that arose out of the shooting in Sutherland Springs when the Air Force failed to upload felony and domestic violence convictions into the National Instant Criminal Background Check System. So the shooter was able to lie and buy a firearm and kill a lot of innocent people at a little Baptist church outside of San Antonio. So we have found a way to, to come up with good policies, enforcing the current law, uh, and respect the right, uh, the fundamental right of uh, law-abiding citizens to keep and bear arms. Wow, so we'll see what happens over the last, what do you think, two weeks to complete? Yeah, my goal is to get the text done this week and then to get it on the floor next week. Uh, I talked to Senator Schumer this morning. Uh, he's good with that, and uh, we're grinding away. All right. Uh, Impressive so far, and Senator Mitch McConnell is in support of what we read. Uh, Senator, thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. You got it. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.